Good Monday morning. Today we're going to continue our GraphQL journey. We're going to do GraphQL caching using Data Loader. I am your host, MPJ, and you are watching Fun Fun Function. So we're continuing to uh, evolve our little uh, GraphQL Goodreads API wrapper. If you just happen to run into this episode, this is a part of a little series. Uh, you can check out the earlier episodes in a playlist by clicking there. All right, let's have a look. Uh, so this is our application. It's the same from earlier weeks. Um, I don't quite remember where we were, so just let's just start it. Node serve.js and let's have a look. Uh, so let's just run this non white space before first tag. Okay, uh, this is because the XML uh, is it's not valid and that is because we uh, we don't have a valid API key because I regenerated these from last time because I showed them on screen and I didn't want everybody in the entire world to use my API key. So let's regenerate that. Uh, clicky clicky, waity waity, waity waity longer and then developer key and then log in and then there's the API key. We reset that just for kicks. Then I copy that. We paste that in here. Uh, in a real world application, you wouldn't hard code it. You would probably use it in a process variable or something like that. But the point of this video is to show how to do GraphQL and do that stuff, not to do architecture. I digress. Let's restart the server and try that again. Uh, I refreshed the page, but I didn't really have to. Okay, so this works uh, and we can do query other things. La -di -da -di -da. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to add caching to this thing. But I want to complicate things a little bit first. Uh, I want to uh, add the ability to uh, query authors on the books. So here, like right here, I want the ability to add author. Uh, we don't have that now because we cannot query field author on type author because, uh, no, hang on. We don't want authors on authors because authors don't have authors, but books have authors. They might have multiple authors, they have co-authors. If I ever wrote a book, I would need a co-author because I have no self-discipline at all. Let's go back to the app and see where we might do this. <laughs> scrolling, 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 scrolling. Okay, we're, we have the book type here. Um, let me remove the sidebar. You know what? We have this annoying console log here. I'm going to delete that, move that, so we are rid of that. Uh, start the server, cool. No console log here, even if we run that. Oh, well, well, yeah. Uh, it wouldn't, like, we, st it, we still have breakage. Uh, cannot find query, query field authors on type book. Again, let's go to the book and start defining an authors field. Authors. And this is going to be a type and it's going to be a list. Okay, so let's go down to author type and see how that looks. Yeah, so author type has something similar, has a books, uh, books property and of type GraphQL list book type. I'm going to copy paste that because I hate typing. Uh, but we don't want books to have a list of books. We want a list of authors. So we want the author type here. I'm going to paste that in there. Uh, and so how do we resolve uh, authors? Well, uh, first of all, we need a resolve method. 
resolve, 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 resolve. And resolve is going to get an um, XML blob. Uh, you can see we can cheat a little bit here and look at how what uh, the ISBN uh, looks like. So no 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 has this. I'm gonna copy that. After this, things become mysterious because we don't know what the author's uh, XML looks like. So we're gonna go to the API again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. API. And this is the uh, book.show endpoint that we have, I think. I'm going to look at this earl here. This is a sample. Uh, okay. Oh, hang on, let me scroll there. Uh, so we have, this is the book element here. Let me make that a bit big ha. Uh, so we have this book element here that corresponds to this book here. And it's the first element here because XML, uh, the way XML is structured, it might have multiple uh, elements. So theoretically, uh, XML, the way it's structured, it could have multiple books, but it only has one book element. Uh, so we grab the first book element and that's this one. And it oh, happens to be the only book element, of course. Uh, and we scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down until we find authors, author, hold on, hold on. Here's authors, cool. It's an XML element and that in turn has uh, several elements, several, several elements uh, of authors or it might have several elements of authors and it has an ID property. So what we're going to do is that we are going to grab the author uh, do, 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 element and uh, you know what we're gonna do this and I'm going to call them author elements and mm, no hang on it's authors and then yeah the first authors element and then we want the author elements in that. XML is hard. Now, we want to grab the IDs and for each author elements. Hang on. Can I? No, help. <laughs> All right, there. Jesus Christ, I don't even remember, remember my own hotkeys. And we want to map over them. And for each element, we want to grab the uh, ID uh, tag element, I mean. <laughs> and we want the first one because this is what it looks like. It's We want the first ID tag. And uh, I think this just gives us the, uh, the value inside of it. So this will give us an array of, uh, of, of strings, which are the IDs. And now, bleh, to get those, we want to look a little bit at how the author type gets its um, uh, its item. So it, it will return a promise that resolves to an array uh, of, uh, of, 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 of of books. But so we want to do this exactly this, but we don't want the book. We want the authors. So I'm going to steal this, just this line here. What? Bump it up, boom, paste it in there. And then we're going to go down to uh, where we uh, loaded the authors. I'm going to steal this as well. Uh, don't panic too much about the uh, duplication. We're going to deal with that in a minute. In a minute. And yes, uh, we're missing one parenthesis. And I think we might have it. No, wait, we have args ID here. We can't have that. We're gonna have this ID here. This ID goes here. 
Ah, I don't know if this will work. Let's restart and see. Okay, go back to GraphQL and run this and see what happens. Field author subtype author must have a selection of subfields. Did you mean authors? Yeah, okay, maybe I did. Huh? Expect syntax error request author expected name found ISBN. Huh? What does it mean? Name. All right. Ha! That actually worked. Great. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, we can now fetch the uh, authors of a book. And we can also actually do this one level down. So the authors can actually now, we can now check, fetch the books of those authors and then fetch the uh, names of those books. No, sorry, the title of those books. And then we can fetch the authors uh, again to create authors of their authors and the names of those authors to create an incredibly inefficient query which takes a long time and probably will rate limit me on the Goodreads API. Oh, it didn't. Oh, nice. Cool. We now have a terribly inefficient API. So that's what we're gonna start with. How can we make this uh, non insanely slow? Before we start dealing with that, I want to uh, remove some duplication because we have some serious duplication here. We have something that is exactly uh, the same here, which is this code here. Let me make that smaller, uh, which is used to fetch the author uh, in the author's array is exactly the same as this code down here which fetches the author for the root 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 element. Uh, so we're going to extract this out into a, a function. Uh, you know what? It's going to be something like this. It's going to be uh, yeah, fetch uh, you, you, you author, author, author. For some reason, I'm having a big trouble uh, spelling author today. It's probably due to uh, me having the onset stroke. I copied that and up here, perhaps we define const fetch author. <laughs> Jesus, that is, that is not good. Uh, my spelling. Uh, okay, maybe this, maybe, maybe this works. Uh, hang on, hang on. Cool. Let's restart the server and see if things. Let's run that. Orgs is not defined. No. Okay. I need to. It's because of this. Let me. <laughs> let me make this bigger again. Let me make it bigger. Let me make it bigger. Right. Right. And let me resize again. This is fantastic entertainment. Great stuff, big font. So scrolling down, uh, yeah, I need to change this to be this so that only argument goes here. Restarting again, see what we get. Running it, running it, running it. Blah. Still very, very slow, very slow, of course, because we're doing a lot of requests. Uh, fine, okay. Refactoring worked. I'm gonna use the fetch author at the other place where we have duplication, which is here. And now, since this is a function with just one argument, the ID, I can pass this just right into map here. Uh, boom. And that will work, presumably. Yes, it did. Overall, this is a great technique. Like map, map is such a fantastic function. It's so universally applicable. Uh, it's it's a great concept, but it becomes even greater when you have a lot of when you deal with functions like this that just take a single argument and does stuff. It makes it really, really uh, like really nice to deal with. Everything becomes magical with unary functions, as they are called. Right here. 
All right, so now how do we um, make this not slow as but? Uh, well, what I want to do is that I'm going to, sorry, 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 that, that, that. I'm going to install something called the data loader. Uh, I'm going to uh, instantiate that somewhere here. Or, or, well, I need to require it first. So, const data loader require require uh, data loader. Oh, this is object oriented. So, I uh, think I need to data loader loader. If you're wondering what my nice plugin for uh, determining uh, package size is, uh, I don't remember what that is. <laughs> uh, show in enabled extensions, it's called something like uh, import cost. It's called import cost. So now you know. Right, so now we're going to create our author loader, author loader, author loader. Let's call it author loader. And it's a new. Uh, data loader Bonk. and uh, this data loader the constructor for data loader takes one uh, argument a function uh, which is a function that takes a keys uh, object which is just an array of, of keys and it, it's supposed to return a promise uh, with an array for the values for those keys, which in case is our authors. So we already have the logic for that uh, down in uh, down in uh, down in down in here in authors. I'm gonna steal this thing here. Yep, I'm gonna paste that in. So it's a promise that all uh, on the it's the IDs, but it's not IDs. It's keys. Uh, well, this could be called anything, I guess, but let's we're fine with that. Uh, and now we're going to be using this here instead of uh, actually calling fetch author uh, directly. We're going to be using the data loader because the data loader or author loader is going to uh, do the um, do the fetching for us and uh, cache it if it feels like it. What was this? I think this is just called load, and then uh, IDs. I think it's going to load many, load many. It's going to load many. So let's serve and and run this to see that it works. It seems to work, but it's still very slow. So uh, let's use it in more places. So let's scroll down here. So instead of fetch author here, we're gonna use our author loader. Author loader dot uh, load because we're just loading one thing. We're gonna. Uh, <laughs> I'm so lazy. I don't want to type anything. I just want to copy and paste. Let's restart it and see if it's it's if it's faster. Mm, yeah, it's probably a little bit faster, but the thing is that we're still uh, fetching the books here. So we need to extract this out as well, I believe. We want to grab this here and we are going to call this um, fetch book. And um, no, 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 I'm gonna write this up here. I'm gonna call it const fetch book. Paste that in here. See, this is exactly the same function. Um, and uh, yeah, I think yes, yes. Okay, hang on. Uh, yeah, let's, let's restart that just to see that things work. I, I keep saying yeah. I don't. I ah, I'm just talking, talking. I'm, I'm practicing a bit to just keep talking because eventually I need to uh, do streaming because I've promised to do streaming to the patrons. Love you, patrons. Uh, but I haven't gotten around to it because streaming is super scary. But you just have to keep talking anyway. All right. So ha. Uh, yes, it works. My refactoring worked. Um, nom, 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 nom. Now we need to create a book loader as well. Uh, otherwise, we won't have any 
book cache book loader mm, new data loader uh, and that uh, works the same way I'm just gonna steal this here it's pasty paste uh, and uh, we uh, want to use fetch book instead of fetch author so book loader is a data loader that uh, just uses fetch book let's see if we can uh, restart this no hang on we need to we need to that won't do anything because we actually need to use the book loader as well so instead of calling fetch book directly we're going to use our book loader and call that load many and we're gonna pass in the ids into that I'm gonna delete the old call hop let's try that again what is happening cool 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 all right that ran pretty slow let's just run it again bam 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 very fast now this means that we have these uh, these author loaders and the the book the author loader and the book loader they are uh, instantiated here when the application starts and then they live on for that uh, for that duration which is actually fine in the case of the goodreads api because uh, books don't change around a lot uh, but in the case of another api we probably wouldn't want the cache to live on for this long uh, we kind of probably want the cache to live on per request so that if the data loader sees a request for the same id in uh, in the same request we don't want to do that same request again but the next request we probably want to throw away the cache because things might have changed under us so let's take these out uh, and we're gonna move them hang on to uh, to the outside here outside in the in the serve instead of the schema we're moving them out of the schema and uh, we are going to give so GraphQL HTTP uh, it, we might give it a an object like this but we can also give it a function that receives a uh, a request object and this way it will create this thing this configuration object here uh, every time it gets a request so we can create these uh, these author load the author loader and the book loader on every request and we gonna we're gonna pass those in as a context object context and the context it, it, this is just an object it can have anything we're gonna we're gonna just pass these into that object by the way these have no special naming significant or or anything they are just my names i could call them book loaders or author loaders if i if i wanted to but i don't want to. i want to call them these we're gonna go back into the schema so how do we access these things uh right now before we just had them had them right here in the sorta global scope but we're now going to uh grab them here and you the second argument is the args but there's also a third argument that is provided to you by the um, uh, graphql express thing and that is the context object and that is passed here context uh, so and remember that we put the author loader in the context object so we just do context dot author loader instead and we do the same thing in the uh, books resolver here what and again the second or uh, third argument is the context and then we also do that here in the resolver for the root author uh, context and context here as well Hop. and that should give us let me run that data loader is not defined no that makes sense hang on hang on hang on we need to grab the data loader out into this into the 
Xr.js. Let's try that again. Uh, let's run that. Uh, bam! Everything broke. Fetch is not defined. Okay, I need to move every goddamn thing out. Hang on. Uh, we need fetch out, I think, as well. Let's try that. Uh, let's start the server again. Let's run it. Play. Oh god! It's not failing. Parse XML is not defined. Uh, let's. It's good. Okay. Yes. No. Ah! Sorry about that. I'm gonna grab that as well. Hopefully, I won't need U tools too. But maybe I will. Let's see. No. Oh god. What happened? No. I needed. <laughs> I needed U tool as well. I needed that. Okay, I, I, I needed everything. I need it. Uh, I need it. Oh yeah, I, I use util to promissify uh, the XML to the JS library. Running it again. Please work. All right, cool. It's taking a lot of time the first time, and now I press play again. It's gonna take a little bit longer because it's it's doing uh, it's caching for a quest, but it's probably not gonna take quite as long as if I had done this from a completely cold cache. Anyway, I hope you get the idea. The app level caching is really fast once it's warmed up, uh, but might be stale. Request level caching, um, less likely to be stale, but uh, also not as fast, of course, because it throws the cache out a lot more often. That is how caching in GraphQL using Data Loader works. If you have any questions and you are a patron of the show, you have access to the Fun Fun Forum and there is a dedicated thread for this particular episode. You can find that by clicking there or in the episode description. If you are not a patron, you can post a comment down below. That is it for today. You have just watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. I release these every Monday morning, 0800 GMT. If you don't want to wait until next Monday morning, you can check out this episode that machine learning Oompa Loompas have selected for you. I am MPJ. Until next Monday morning, stay tuned.